Profiting from parity. It's not just a good sounding phrase. It's also the right thing and the smart thing to do for investors. And during this talk, I am going to share the advice that I've gathered from the hundreds, if not thousands, of entrepreneurs and investors that I've met through my work at BPI France as well as at the World Bank previously. I'm Fanny de Lavelle, I'm the manager for Europe at BPI France, uh, which is the French public investment bank. It's also the largest VC in France. To start with a global picture of the female entrepreneur entrepreneurship in Europe. Female startup funders are still very much a rarity in Europe. Women account for less than one third of entrepreneurs. And this is actually, Europe is one of the continents with the lowest share of women entrepreneurs overall. Uh, it's lower, for instance, than in Asia or in Africa, as well as South America. Women are particularly uh, underrepresented in venture capital in Europe. So once they do launch a business, they struggle to find the funding. European female entrepreneurs, for instance, in 2021, uh, pulled only 1% of the venture capital investment. They didn't do that much better in the US, to be fair, where they pulled a wowing 2% of the overall venture capital investment. So there's progress to be made all around the world on this. And this is the smallest sli slice that women entrepreneurs have raised on those two continents since 2016. This isn't fair, for sure, but it's also not smart. Uh, do you know, does anyone know in the room, uh, how much more revenue female entrepreneur, female companies deliver for every dollar invested in their firm? Is it 0.5% more? Is it 20% more? It's actually twice as much. So for every dollar invested in a female company, a female funded company, uh, the revenue they produce is twice as high as the revenue that a male entrepreneur would produce. So clearly women entrepreneurs to get to where they are have surrounded so many obstacles that their businesses are so much more efficient than a lot of their male counterparts. So it just makes business sense not just moral sense, to also invest in, in women entrepreneurs. Um, and this is, of course, at the seed level, at the Series A, Series B, but even during the crisis, we were seeing that the women entrepreneurs had both earlier exits as well as higher valuations per dollar invested. So again, it makes business sense, and still investors aren't doing it. Women are overlooked and underfunded, and defended. it's neither Fed nor smart, we can change that. And there are things that can be done on both sides of the table, from the entrepreneurial side to the investor side, all the way to the limited partners that fund the VC funds. To give a little uh, background on where I get all of this information and the advice that I'm going to share with you today, uh, I work at BPI France, again, the French national investment agency, the biggest VC in France. Uh, we invest in French companies all the way from seed to Series C, even supporting their exit internationalization strategy. And supporting women entrepreneurs is at the core of our strategy. Women, for instance, represent 48% of the startup creation projects that we support. Of course, this percentage unfortunately decreases as we go into uh, scaling up the business and exits and IPO. Uh, but this is trying, we're really striving to change. We support companies both financially, all the way from the, the research part, all the way to their IPO and exits. We also support them in a qualitative way, which really helps us to understand the specific challenges that each entrepreneur is facing while raising funds and while growing their business. And by having those conversations with all of those women entrepreneurs and investors, I've gathered a lot of insights on what could help to bridge the gap that we're seeing in female investments. I specifically work in a team called Euroquity, which is the main matchmaking platform in Europe between the most innovative startups and the right investors and corporate partners. So during my time, I've met with startups from all over Europe as well as Africa and had those conversations to matchmake them with the right investors. And I'm finding it still extremely hard to find even 30% women to pitch during our pitch sessions and even worse, to find investor, female investors to participate in the pitch sessions. I'm still at about 10% female investors participating in our pitch. 
even though this is one of the top priorities I've set for my team. So it's, it's clearly uh, a hard problem to solve, but there are ways that we can all contribute to solve it. My first uh, group of advice is going to be for the female funders in the room, because I believe that we have a majority of funders here uh, rather than general partners or uh, LPs of, uh, of VC funds. So my first advice for you is to build very selective funding relationships, not just networks. So a lot of the women funders that I'll talk to will send their pitch deck to every investor they know and waste a lot of time following up on conversations that are never going to go anywhere. And this is advice actually that is relevant for female funders just as much as male funders in many ways. But you, I, what, what, what you should do is target the investors that have an investment thesis that match your business and your vision. Uh, because if it, you don't, you're going to waste the investor's time, you're going to waste your time, they're never going to invest in your firm to start with. Um, you should also try as much as you can to aim for firms that have a female partner uh, within their VC uh, because they tend to be much more likely to invest in female firms as well. Uh, so this should be part also of your tar investor targeting. One thing that I've also found in the female funders that I talk to is that they tend to follow the more traditional routes of getting funding. And mostly when they start up, they will ask for money from friends and from family. They're not going to go in other ways to banks, for instance, or through non-traditional uh, quote-unquote means of getting financing, whereas male entrepreneurs do. So for instance, only 10% of the women entrepreneurs that I've supported, and that's in the hundreds, uh, have approached banks, and that's one-third fewer than the male entrepreneurs that I've supported. Uh, so look outside the box, think, you know, value yourself, uh, don't just ask from friends and fa money from friends and family, look at other funding opportunities that might be available. The third advice on this uh, broad looking for the right funds category is to connect with women entrepreneurs at slightly more advanced stages of development than you are. So if you're in seed, look for a women entrepreneur that has succeeded in the Series A. If you're in Series A, look at a women entrepreneur that succeeded in Series B. I have found that the women entrepreneurs that have actively built those networks and gotten advice on their funding strategy from women entrepreneurs that have just gone through the same thing have been widely more successful in their uh, fundraising strategy as well. And there are programs that help you to do that. You don't have to do it on your own through you know, LinkedIn research for hours and hours. Uh, for instance, in the Netherlands, there's a program called TechLeap, which is free for companies and connects companies together at different stages of development. We do that at BPI France as well. Uh, there's an organization that does that pretty much in every European country. My second group of advice for with female funders today to increase their chances of getting investment is to try and change their mindset towards fundraising. That might not be true for a lot of women here that value their company and value uh, their themselves enough to have that equal relationship when they start their fundraising process. But what I'm seeing in, with a lot of the entrepreneurs and female entrepreneurs that I follow is that they don't see the meeting with the inv investor as a two-way street. They see it as asking for a favor, asking almost for charity. That's not what you're doing. You're giving the investor an opportunity to invest in an amazing business idea and in an amazing person that you are, because you're building this great firm. Um, so you need to take the meeting as an opportunity not only for the investor to get to know you, but also for you to get to know you, the investor. It's sort of like a job interview in many ways. You're assessing them, you should be assessing them just as much as they're assessing you. The other thing that I've noticed in my conversations in support of women investors, uh, of women entrepreneurs, is that they ask for amounts that are much too low. And again, that speaks, I think, to the confidence that um, women might lack in, in the, their firms and in putting their, themselves forward in the investment process. So for instance, I am currently supporting an amazing startup from Georgetown University in the US. It's, she's building a, uh, an avatar-based community building dating platform that I think could really 
do very, very well. And she was coming to me and asking, you know, maybe I should approach a VC and ask for $200,000. Do you think it's too much? Like, I don't feel comfortable with it. And I told her, ask them for a million, they'll negotiate it down to maybe 700,000, but at least you'll have planned for any financial contingency that might come your way, and you're not gonna be, you're not gonna have to go back to them within six months asking for more money. So raise your stakes, believe in yourself to ask for more money than you think maybe you, um, you were thinking of at the beginning. Uh, so know your value. Again, firms with gender diverse teams are 25% more, 25 more likely to outperform their peers. Uh, so you're giving them an opportunity to invest in an amazing firm that's gonna give them profit in return. My last recommendation for funders before I move on to the recommendations for general partners and limited partners uh, is that once you have the investment, make sure that you walk the talk and have diversity at the top. So when you, an investor invests in your firm, it usually means that there's going to be a representative from that investor on your board. Um, try and ask, or do the best you can to have one of the women from that VC fund be on your board. A, an investment relationship is very much akin to some sort of marriage or a relationship a relationship of some of some um, of this sort, where um, you are betting on someone to join your board and provide you with enough advice to guide your firm in the right direction. And if it's someone that doesn't really believe in your firm, that doesn't really believe in you, they're going to have that investment mindset only. So I hear a lot of companies telling me, I don't have a board of directors, I have a board of investors, and they're not helping me out. So try and find someone who really believes in you, really believes in your firm, that can represent the investor on your board. And pay it forward, share your story. Uh, the person just before me here was talking about role models. It really works. Uh, when I was at the World Bank, we did a lot of studies on this, and having role models, uh, successful entrepreneurs showing the way, showing that it can be done, makes a huge difference, not only in the mind of future entrepreneurs, but also in the minds of potential investors that think, okay, women entrepreneurs can succeed. Maybe I'll invest in this next one as well because she might be the next unicorn as well. My next group of advice is for limited partners. For those who aren't uh, extremely versed in the startup funding universe, limited partners are basically the ones that give VCs, venture capitalists, the funds to invest in your startups. So you might not know this, but VCs actually do have to fundraise as well to get funds to then disperse to your startups. And limited partners are typically, for instance, pension funds or institution, institutional investors that are gonna have a more strategic long-term view and guide in many ways the investment thesis of the general partners of the, of the VC funds. And in that sense, they have a huge role to, pl to play in increasing the percentage of investment that goes to women-created uh, uh, startups in Europe. For now, only about 5% of managing partners of EU VC funds are women. It's even lower than in the US, where that percentage is about 15%, which also isn't that great, but a little bit better. Uh, limited partners can do a lot to change that. And once you have more VC, women VCs, you have more investments going into women as well. So one thing that you can do is to, that limited partners can do, is to re-engineer their processes while they invest, while they decide to invest in a specific fund. So for instance, when they um, decide to create a new fund or to give money to a new fund, usually the check sizes that are required for new VCs to come in are too high for a lot of potential women VCs to contribute. So a lot of women, um, uh, potential women funders, potential women VCs in Europe, just don't have one to three uh, percent of money to pony up for the creation of a new fund. So um, they also base their decision usually on the investment track record, which a lot of women also don't have. They have maybe very successful entrepreneurial experience or experience in executive experience in corporations at uh, the CEO level or COO level. Uh, so changing their due diligence process when they select the managing partners to invest in 
is very much key to having more women uh, managing partners in VC funds. So for instance, it could include again, past experiences uh, as an entrepreneur or executive in large corporations. The second aspect that uh, limited partners can have an, uh, an impact on is having making diversity a condition of their capital. So not only having more women VC managing partners, uh, but also making sure that even in those VCs that don't have female managing partners, there's a certain percentage of that investment that goes into women entrepreneurs. Uh, so a lot of uh, limited partners will tell us that, yes, diversity is very important to them. They want more to invest, they want their funds to invest more in women. It's a crucial component of their investment strategy. But then they don't include that at all in their success indicators for the VC funds that they provide uh, their funds to. They don't have that due diligence process when they try to, when they invest in a new fund. They don't look at the number of investments that were made by that fund into women entrepreneurs. So it's time to walk the talk, as was also uh, previously said here, and make diversity a condition of your capital when you invest in, in a new VC fund. There's also a lot that general partners can do. General partners are the heads of the VC funds that are going to make the ultimate decisions to invest in your startup as a, as a woman funder. Uh, I hear a lot of uh, VC funds and general partners at VC funds that tell me that they just don't find women entrepreneurs. You know, they, they try, but they're just not there. It's not true. It might only be less than a third of entrepreneurs in Europe, but I have seen through my pitches many, many women entrepreneurs. They're just not looking in the right networks. So as a general partner in a VC fund, if you actually want to walk the talk and invest in more women entrepreneurs, you need to build the right relationships and partnerships with the right people, the right networks to get those women into your network. So for instance, building relationships and partnerships with leaders leading accelerators that have parity in, this, in the, um, the, um, the uh, startups that uh, participate in their activities. Uh, getting included more into women's networks is really important to get that deal flow uh, into their radar. Uh, another thing that they can do is to hire more women and promote them more. Because again, women are going to have slightly different networks than male VCs. And they tend to have networks that are more female oriented, that have more women in them. And they're going to uh, be able to give them that access, put that on the, to put those women entrepreneurs on the radar that the VCs would have completely ignored otherwise. But to do that, they need to hire not just within their networks, but to advertise their roles publicly, and of course, again, to leverage those partnerships that I mentioned in my first point here. They should also maintain an active database of early female funders. There's a lot, as I mentioned before, of very early stage women creators um, that might grow into the seed or series A or series B stages. And it's really worth maintaining that deal flow so that the moment that they see a woman get to the next stage, a woman funder get to the next stage, they can be the first one to, uh, to apply and having, uh, or to contact them. And having this specific deal flow will again help put investment in women entrepreneurs on the radar for everyone within that firm. Another point uh, that general partners, uh, that hinders the ability of general partners and VC funds in general to, to invest in women is their due diligence process when they start talking to the startups. So we've seen uh, in the conversations that we've had with BBA France with different VCs that the questions that they ask women entrepreneurs when deciding whether to invest in them or not tend to be slightly different from the ones that they ask male entrepreneurs. So so the more preventative questions, they're a little bit more risk averse towards investing in women, to, uh, women entrepreneurs. And because of this, they tend to walk out of the conversation with a bit of a negative gut feeling. And the gut feeling is a large part, at least in the early stage, of why an entrepreneur is going to invest in your startup or not. So no one as an investor wants to have you know, a sheet of pre-listed questions. They like to have dynamic conversations. But standardizing the process even a little bit could make a huge difference in terms of the percentage of women entrepreneurs that your firm invests in. 
as last words, we really have momentum. I know that I've given you a lot of slightly depressing presentations during my presentation, but I've seen so many fantastic women entrepreneurs. 2021 was a record year for female entrepreneurs' exits in Europe. As you can see here, this is data from Sifted and the Financial Times. We're really gaining momentum. Um, we have the chance to bridge that gap and make the investment environment uh, more equal, more, uh, more um, uh, in inclined to be uh, in, a, in a parity, uh, and to make the investors understand that profiting from parity is the right and smart thing to do for them. So let's talk more action, and let's get started today with all those recommendations. Q and A, um, and I actually wanted to the graph you had just there about how um, yeah in, in 2021 that just kind of skyrocketed obviously during the pandemic. Why was that? What kind of clicked with female um, kind of access to VC? Mm -mm. That's a great question. So a lot of it is the momentum that has been gaining mm -hmm. throughout the last couple of years. There's also a couple of programs that were created in the last few years, mostly by public institutions like the European Innovation Council, by BPI France, or different other organizations in the last five years that have really uh, put a focus on helping women entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're seeing here is those efforts paying off. Fantastic. And looking at the other end of the of the spectrum, maybe is you kind of mentioned that there's this confidence issue with women, and I mean, is that the barrier that women have to face? Is you know they're not asking for enough money, they're not even feeling confident to even raise a, raise their voice or raise an idea. So is that the only barrier, or is there similar things we're seeing? Oh, it's not definitely not the only barrier, and we shouldn't blame ourselves for not getting enough funding. For sure, as I mentioned, <laughs> there's a lot. A bias, of biases that investors have, that limited partners have, that also prevent us from getting access to that funding. But yes, confidence is also a part of it. Um, actually, when I was at the World Bank, we did a, an evaluation of different uh, business development programs for entrepreneurs. Uh, it was in Africa, but it also actually uh, showed that the results were, were the same in France. And we showed that between giving a pure business course to women entrepreneurs, compared to giving them a personal initiative training, where we boosted their confidence and showed them, you know, to look at options A, B, C, D, and Z uh, if they if they need to. The personal initiative training increased their profits in the longer term so much more than the traditional business uh, for, uh, training did. So clearly, there's something here uh, in terms of our self confidence that we can we can work on. Fantastic and. Obviously, I know um, you kind of mentioned some different uh, kind of locations there, Africa, USA, Europe in your presentation. Did you say that USA is kind of slacking behind a little bit? And is there any reason for that? So Europe is slacking behind oh, okay, yeah. in terms of the number of women entrepreneurs and also the amount of funding that mm -hmm. is getting into them. But the, U the US isn't that much better either. Yeah. Uh, so there's different reports. There's a great organization called the Billion Dollar Fund that is gathering capital. It gathered a billion dollar, more than a billion dollar actually, to invest in women entrepreneurs all around the world. And they produced an amazing report about the state of funding women entrepreneurs in the US as well as as well as well Europe. But yeah, no, it's, it's a problem very much everywhere. Across the board, right. Um, and it's something interesting, obviously, your kind of matchmaking that you do. So what are the factors that go into this? Obviously, you said, you know, having like a few female board on team, having a female team kind of matchmaking it there, but what are the other factors that you put into it? Mm -mm. So the matchmaking that we do is, um, is uh, we do it for male entrepreneurs as well as female entrepreneurs. Right. Because I'm the manager of the team, I force them to have a certain quota, to have a, a certain number of women entrepreneurs that get onto that matchmaking platform. Uh, but the matchmaking is very much actually, the, or the filtering is done by our partners in the local ecosystem. So I work with innovation agencies, incubators all across Europe and Africa that uh, analyze and identify what they think are the best innovators in their ecosystems. Send it over to me. I do an, another filtering exactly based on the, the their growth potential, also of course uh, their diversity um, on their on their teams and their boards, and then I match make them with the right investors according to in the, the investor's investment thesis, um, as well as the right corporate partners for industrial partnerships. Fantastic. And a final question. I think this might just be 
kind of generic about this whole event and kind of how we're supporting women. Um, all of the stats look so positive when it comes to things are getting better, things are improving. Um, where do you see you know this, this space in five years' time? I mean, it's definitely growing, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that there is. I mean, the fact that there is a track specifically for women within this event is also, of course, a, a very, a very promising and telling sign. Uh, but I think there is still a lot of effort to be done, and I think that a lot of investors tend to think, okay, you know, the, the momentum is growing. We've invested one percent of our funds in women startups. We're good. Uh, it's going to develop by itself. No, I think if everyone puts. Uh, actually those recommendations that I provided into action, it could help to make that difference a lot more. I think there's just a lot of larger also cultural problems that I think we'll address on the panel later today yes. as well, <laughs> but biases um, that need to be challenged that go a lot beyond into the, the psychology of, uh, of investors um, and entrepreneurs. Uh, but I'm, I am uh, positive about yes. the future. Absolutely. And like you said, we have a panel later about um, gender bias and I think we're definitely going to touch on some similar topics, whether, whether that comes to language or just, you know, the psychology behind how we're hiring and things like that and the digital space. So um, super looking forward to that. But that is all we have time for for your session today. Thank you so much, Fanny, for joining Thank us. Thank you, everyone. Take the clip up for me. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Appreciate it.